Hey guys, this is AC Service Tech, and today what we're looking at is some of the gear that I use to start and check or service refrigeration and air conditioning systems. Right here, you have a quick connect uh, pressure gauge. So this I use sometimes for checking refrigerant charges. I use a low side gauge and then this high side gauge. And what I do is if I think a system's working properly, but I just want to go ahead and connect uh, for pressure, then I just connect these on. Um, once again, one for the low side, one for the high side. This is the high side. When I connect in, uh, you're, I'm really not taking a whole lot of refrigerant from the system. And so then I can just go ahead and uh, disconnect when I'm done. Versus when I check with these uh, gauge manifold sets, after I'm done and while the system is running, I have to charge all that liquid that's in these hoses back into the system. And that's that disconnect procedure. You can find that in some of the other videos I put out there. But I also use this uh, for pressure testing. If I uh, connect the nitrogen line onto the other side of the system and then I connect this onto one side, I then disconnect my nitrogen line off the other side and make sure that that port is not leaking. If there's a Schrader valve or if there is a service valve that I can backseat there, uh, then I just can check to see if my pressure goes down. Uh, if I have to leave a pressure test on for a while, uh, I'd rather leave this on than uh, one of my manifold sets. As well, a manifold set has more potential to leak versus this really only has one connection and this is not moving. Once this is connected, this port right here comes from the factory like that. It's never going to be uh, uh, moved again, really. All right, but uh, that's what I would use something like this for and they're fairly cheap. All right, now we can go over the two valve, three port, refrigeration manifold gauge set. So this set right here would be uh, maybe for somebody starting out, I actually have three of these or four professional that's that's doing it every day. All right, I, a lot of my videos you see, I, I use these a lot, okay? I also teach my students on these. I also teach my students on the Brute as well um, from Yellow Jacket, all right? I also am working with Hillmore as well, so you can see that. I'll go over all of them. Uh, but basically what you have here is this handle right here will connect your service hose to your low side. Okay, when you open that up and you have your handle on this side is going to connect your service line to your liquid line. I do like the hoses that have the manual offs as you've seen in a lot of the videos. So this is a manual low loss valve right here on the hose. I like it to be at the very end and I like to have no uh, temporary connections um, with, with rubber grommets that could leak potentially. All right, so, so these I like and also the quick disconnect uh, low loss fittings as well, but I do prefer these right here. I can open these valves on this pretty quickly. See, I can just kind of go like that and I'm, I'm open. There's no need to crank on these afterwards. You just open them up and, and they're good. Okay, to get a full flow, say for a vacuum. I always pull vacuum uh, from both sides of the system after an oil blowout. You can see what an oil blowout is from uh, some of my other videos that I've had there. But this one right here, I have my old, old set I use for recovery uh, for systems that I'm not reusing the refrigerant from. And then I have uh, two more sets like this in my service truck and one for R22, one for R410A. This one right here, this is the Brute manifold. This is a four valve manifold from Yellow Jacket. What's nice is they have those, you know, rubber grommets on them. Uh, these ones as well, you can still open them up pretty quickly like this. It, it does take a lot more turns than, say, the Hillmore one. The Hillmore one is about half as many turns to open it as the Yellow Jacket is. Uh, but the four port is going to be a little bit bulkier than the standard set. Uh, you're, you can still get the hoses like this as well, you know, with the manual low loss uh, fittings on the end. What's nice is you have this 3 8 hose that comes with it that you can hook directly to the vacuum pump you still have the ports that you're gonna be taking off on the back versus the Hillmore or in the front. So that, that's nice about the Hillmore that they're in the front. You can get to them a little easier, all right? But if I was to vacuum, I could, I could vacuum with this hose right here connected to the, to the uh, vacuum pump. 
And that was if I chose to pull a vacuum through the gauge set. And you don't have to do that. Uh, but if you do uh, pull a vacuum through the gauge set, you can pull it through on that. What's nice with this is if you're doing, say, a triple evacuation with nitrogen, you can uh, get your nitrogen ready on this line right here after you get the vacuum pumped down with this. So basically, uh, if you are hooked to a system and you have both of these ports open, you're running a vacuum. Okay, we'll go ahead and open this all the way. We'll open this all the way. Uh, you're going to open this valve. When you open this valve right here, it's going to connect this port to here and to and to here. All right, but nothing will go into the system unless these are completely open. And right now that's closed. I left that one open. I'm going to open this one back up. So now the vacuum pump, as it's sucking uh, the contaminants and the non-condensables out of the system, it's going to pull from both sides here. With this right here, you could attach a micron gauge if you had this one open as well. You could attach a micron gauge right to the end of this hose right here. All right, so you give it a little length, and this way the uh, micron gauge is, is not in series between here and the vacuum pump, so it, it gets it a little bit further away from the system. Um, obviously, you could also hook your micron gauge a little closer to the system over to onto the ports. So right where you connect this on at, you can use a valve core removal tool and you can actually attach a micron gauge there. I don't use the, I don't use this right here, this uh, liquid site. Uh, I don't really find much use for that. All right, but these are, these are pretty nice. I do like these. They're a little, little bulky, but I do like them. I do have a lot of, uh, People asking me why I don't switch to digital gauges, and my whole theory on the whole thing is that when I'm teaching and when I'm doing this, that I want to have the most thinking into it that is possible, basically. I know that sounds like I'm making more work for myself, but when there's a problem on the system, everything's fine, you know, until you have a problem with a system then you need to start really thinking about what's happening to the saturated state in that system. So I want my students to look at the pressure, convert it to a saturated temperature. So the outside ring is pressure right here. Then you have on this one's three inner rings that will line up with the dial. The green is R22, the pink is R410A, and the orange is R404A. So you bring it in from whatever pressure it is, say it's at 75 PSIG, I can actually bring it into 44 degrees R22 if, if I do use this gauge for R22. Um, me personally, right now, I just use this gauge for R410A. I have one set for R22, one for 410A uh, in the truck, and one for recovery of systems that I'm not going to be um, uh, reusing the refrigerant, like burnouts and things like that. I don't want to use my good gauge set for compressor burnouts basically okay but uh, the whole point is that you don't have oil contamination moving it from one system to the next uh, so so that's the what the reason behind using uh, one manifold gauge set for each different type of refrigerant r22 you have mineral oil r12 you have mineral oil 134a a lot of times is poe uh, but uh, also 410a is almost always poe oil uh, and you just don't want to mix the oils just for the compressor's sake. But uh, getting back to the uh, digital sets, I'm not opposed to digital sets whatsoever uh, if you are somebody that has been in the field for a while. I mean, this is just one person's perspective. It doesn't mean it's right. It doesn't mean it's wrong. It's just one person's perspective, okay? Um, so I just stick with the compound gauges like this right here. I just don't want to take any thinking out of it. I don't want a digital manifold gauge to do any calculations for me or um, show me what those numbers are. I want to convert it myself, or at least that's my that's my thought on it once again. So uh, the Hillmore manifold gauge set right here, it doesn't take as many turns to open this valve right here. That's nice. I like that. This is about the same size and weight as the uh, Yellow Jacket Brute. What I really like, this uh, temp sensors right here, 
they're very accurate. I'm just going to turn that on. You can see uh, they're no more than about 0.2 degrees off from each other. 0.2.3 degrees off from each other. I just had this on before the video, just checking. Uh, and at that point, it was 0.1 and 0.2 away from each other, basically. So they're, they're very accurate and very quick. Um, they, they do clamp on very well. You can take a look at the thin metal that it takes with the temperature sensor. I, I do like the smallest amount of metal possible mounted onto the, the line, okay? Just so it's not absorbing any temperature from the, from the outside air and that it's making good contact onto the lines and all that. A lot of times I put Armaflex over uh, the temp sensor, regardless of whether it's a clamp or if it's a small K-type thermocouple that you see that I use with my UEI multimeter. But this is a very good set as well. Uh, the only thing with this set is they do sell this set with hoses, with this extra section uh, of hose. I don't necessarily like that with the valve. I like when you have the valve all the way at the end with no other uh, possible leaking points like this. I, once again, I don't use this, this liquid line sight right here. And as far as accuracy, the, the, this set right here is just as accurate as the yellow jacket, it seems. I don't know about life expectancy on these because these are newer. I will say that. Uh, but uh, I do like to use these periodically as well. I'll tell you what, there's another thing right here. The, the temp sensors, uh, really you have to push in hard. So there is no uh, missing the connection. It is a very tight electrical connection. This is a JB. I like JB vacuum pumps, always have. Uh, I've used Robin Air and Yellow Jacket in the past. And JB makes a real good vacuum pump. Uh, this is the eliminator. There's ones with gas ballast and then also your on-off valve. This one doesn't have either of those. This is a little bit less expensive of a model, but it really does the job very well. You want to make sure that you're always changing the vacuum pump oil in these. Otherwise, the seals will not work very well. Okay, So especially when you are uh, vacuuming out a very contaminated system, you really want to change the oil on that. And once again, you will the whole vacuum pump will will be bad. At least the the front here, at least not the motor, but the front will be bad uh, if you don't change the oil, and it will not be able to pull a 500 micron vacuum, or you know, getting down to 200 microns or or lower, and then allowing the system to rise up to below 500 microns. Uh, you won't be able to do that unless you change the oil and keep those seals intact on that. Once again, uh, the Schrader valve removal tool. You can take this off just like this. You can attach a micron gauge with a hose onto this. You can attach this into the port. You can pull the Schrader valve out so it's not a restriction when you're running your vacuum. And that makes a very good uh, way of doing things. And then you just attach your hose right on here. So after you break your vacuum with refrigerant, then you can go ahead and replace your Schrader valve or put it back in. And this is what you're familiar with seeing if you've seen any of the other videos. Uh, I, I usually take my temp readings with this type of setup right here on my trusted UEI multimeter, which I'm always using. It's my, it's my go-to tool. It's always in my hand and it's in all of my students' hands as well. Uh, I try to get this to be burned into their memory as best as possible, how to use every one of the functions on here. But what I do is I, I electrical tape the K-type thermocouple onto the liquid line if I'm checking subcooling or if I'm checking superheat, I'm taping it onto the vapor line. And I may put Armaflex insulation around that uh, or just basically making sure that the sun's not beating down on it. You want to make sure that you're getting an accurate reading for your temperature in order to do your superheat or subcooling calculations. Just so you know, I did put links in the description below for, I believe, just about each of the pieces of equipment I showed you here. So you can go look at that, look at reviews and different things like that. Uh, feel free to uh, post any uh, comments or questions on those. And I hope you enjoyed yourself. We'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.